Hello and welcome to part 2 of the series on how to create the web WhatsApp UI with React.js. In this part we are going to work on the navigation section. The last time we left off with the layout as we see right here. On the top left we have the navigation, here we have the search, the list, details, chat and the message section. So before we start with the navigation section, we actually want to change the height of the navigation section. As you can see right here, the navigation section is perfectly aligned with the background right here. And as you can see right here, it is not perfectly aligned. So, in order to do that, we open up our chat box, and right here we want to alter the size of the second row. So if you say, for example, 125 pixels, rows, but it's now too much. You say 120 pixels, a little bit too small, 110, still too small, maybe 100 pixels, that looks a little bit too big. So, to fix this, we actually want to use the calculate function in CSS. Now what the calculate function does is it calculates different values together. So instead of hard coding 100 pixels, we actually want to calculate something. So let's say that we want to make the second row even as big, just as big as the background height of the first color. So let's go in our app.css and the first color is 25 view height. Let's say 25 view height. As we can see right now, it's way too big. So we want to subtract the margin on top because that is the offset of the navigation section. So we say minus 5 view height. Since if we look right here, we see that it is a margin top and bottom from 5 view height. So we subtract it. Save this up. As you can see, it's already shrinking a little bit. So the last thing we want to do in this subtraction is we want to subtract the first row from it since that is also counted towards the offset. So we also subtract 90 pixels, like so, which is the first row. So if we save this up, we'll see that it is perfectly aligned. And if we zoom out, it actually stays aligned. And that's because we are using the calculate function and we are calculating it relative to the height of the background. So actually, instead of choosing a view height, the background we actually want to hard code it in pixels because right now as you can see when we zoom out everything is shrinking but the navigation section is just staying really big and that's not what we want so instead of saying here 25 view height let's go with 500 pixels and this one start from 500 pixels that might be a little bit too much maybe 200 pixels like so yeah i think this looks better and if we go to 100 percent we get this but now instead of using the view height in the calculate function right here, we actually want to use 200 pixels, which we use right here. So we say 200 pixels, and as we can see, it's now scaling correctly. So now that we have this done, we actually want to continue working on the navigation section. In the navigation section, we actually have two different states. We have an open state, and in the open state, you see that we have a button to go back, and we also have a closed state. And in a closed state, we actually only want to display a profile picture, a message icon, and three dots to go to the settings page. So we actually want to switch between two different states in the navigation section. Open, which is this one, and a closed state. And we then want to adjust the height of the navigation bar depending on that state. So in our chat box, we actually want to create a new state. So let's say navigation state set navigation state and then we are going to say equals new state and by default we want to say false and instead of naming this navigation state maybe we want to say navigation open set navigation open by default navigation is not open so now we want to use this state to alter the height of the navigation section so to alter this height, let's first try out how we are going to alter this height. I'm going to write a comment right here, because this, the height of the open state, like so. Let's see how we can create the height of the navigation in the closed state. So I'm going to copy over this, and name it closed, copy over this. And to create the height of the navigation bar in the closed state, we actually want to remove 
the second row. And instead of removing it, we actually want to replace it with zero pixels, like so. So if we save this up and we comment out our new row, we should see what we were seeing before because this is our original code. As you can see, it is now occupying two rows. And if we comment out the first line of code and we comment in our new code, save it up, we'll see that the navigation is now taking up just as much space as the detail set. So this is how we switch between those two different states. So instead of putting them both in the chat box class, we actually want to create different classes. Let's create a chat box navigation open class and a chat box navigation closed class, like so. And then right here, we have the code for the closed state. So I'm just going to copy over this into here. And right here, we have the code for the open state. So I'm going to copy this over to here. And I'm going to comment this in. So right now, the chat box doesn't have a grid template rows anymore, but it is in a different class. So if we save this up, we see that it is just taking up all the space, as in this one gets two rows, this one gets one row, this gets two rows, one row, three rows, and one row, because in total we have five rows. So now let's use the state to switch between the open navigation state and the closed navigation state. So right here, we have the state. So right here, we actually want to dynamically render the class name. So we want to say that we want to write some code in here, which we do by adding curly brackets. Then we add backticks. And then in here, we say chat box. So it now has the chat box class. We just wrote it a little bit different. So as you can see, it still has the class chat box. And what we can do right now is we can add a ternary operator. So what the ternary operator is, is actually the same as an eval statement. So normally, if we write a statement, we write it like so. We say, if, for example, 5 equals 5, then we do something else. We do something else. And then right here, we can, for example, say, return true. And right here, we say, return false. So as you can see, this is one, two, three, four, five lines of code for checking if this number is equal to five, which it is. Then we want to return something and else we want to return something else. This is just a normal if statement. We can also write it this way. So right here, I'm going to write ternary state or the ternary operator. And we want to say return. So we start with the return. Then we write the if statement. So we want to say if 5 equals 5, then we add a question mark. So this is actually the equivalent of an if statement. And then right here, we say that we want to return true and else we want to return false. So this is actually the same as this. And right here, we have if 5 equals 5, return true. And the else is actually, oh, the else is actually the same as this column right here. But then we want to return false. So actually this should return the same as this one, but it's just written in a different way. So this is also what we are going to use right here. So right here, we are going to do this the same way as we did it right here. So in here we can write some code because we used backticks. And in this code we want to say, if the navigation is in an open state, question mark, then we want to return something, else we want to return something else. So what do we want to return? If the navigation is in an open state, then we want to add this class to it. That box navigation open. So we add it to here. And else, what do we want to add? We want to add the chat box navigation closed state, like so. We are going to fill this in right here. Let's save this up. And I'm going to remove this test function right here. Let's save it up. And as you can see, right now, we don't see anything. Or well, we don't see the normal height. And let's look. At our chat box, right here we see that the chat box is in a navigation closed state. What if we do make this true? So we set the initial state to true. We see that it is now in an open state. So now we can really easily switch between the open and the closed state for the navigation section. So now that we have our layout down, we actually want to start creating the navigation section for when it is closed. So in this navigation section, we actually have three different areas. We have a profile picture right here. Right here we have a message icon. And right here we have a triple dot icon. 
So for the profile picture, we are going to create a new folder in our public folder named Assets. And we're going to create a new folder for the images, like so. And the image that we are going to use is this image. It's the logo of the channel, content coding. If you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below. So now that we have our picture right here, we want to use it right here. So actually before we use it, let's create the different sections in the navigation section right here. So in the navigation section, we have an image, which is the profile picture. Then we have an icon button for the messages. So let's go with icon for now. We'll replace this later. And then we have another icon button for the settings. So for those icons, we actually use the material Y icons. So for the message icon, let's import message icon from material Y icons dash message like so. And then for the triple dot vertical, let's import more vert icon from material UI icons and then more vert like so. Now that we have those two icons, we can actually replace them with our icons which we had before, which weren't really icons. So now that we have those, let's save this up and see if we can get to see our icons. So as you can see, now we have our little chat icon and a nice little more vertical icon. That's nice. Next up, we actually want to display our profile picture. So right here we say source. And then we pass in the source of assets, images, and it is front end coding dot png like so so if we save this up we'll see our profile picture appearing next up we actually want to add class names to those items so right here we say that this will be the profile picture so that we can actually scale them down and we actually want to make it round as well so in our chat box we actually have already a class for the navigation and right here we want to target the profile picture and let's say that we want to make it a width of 48 pixels and a height of 48 pixels and then we also want to add a border radius of 50% so right now we see the logo appearing or well the profile picture <laughs> and then we actually want to say border radius 50% and as you can see now we have a nice little circle so before we actually do anything else I really want to change the background color for the navigation section so we can get a better view of how it will look like. I'm going to take this color and I'm going to apply it right here to the navigation. So I just copy it over the color to here. And as you can see, now we have a nice little background color on our navigation section. The next up, we actually want to adjust the color of the icons. For the icons, we want to use this color. Let's see if we can get it. So I've copied over the color and let's add it to our icons. So in our chat box, navigation, and then let's see how can we target those icons. Right here, we click on an icon, we see that it is of type SVG. So in our navigation, we want to target the SVGs. So I want to say that we want to give it a color of this color, like so. And if we save it up, we'll see that our icons now have a nice little color. The next up, we actually want to make the icons a little bit bigger. So the font size, one RAM. So that makes them actually smaller. Let's go for 1.5 RAM. I think they are a little bit bigger, 1.7. That might be too big. Let's go with 1.6. So, so if we comment this out, they are a little bit smaller initially, and 1.6 makes them a little bit bigger. So now that we have the correct size for the icons, for a color, and the correct shape for the profile picture, we actually want to put them in the right position. So the profile picture should be here in the middle left section and the jet and the triple dot icons should be in the right section. So as you can already see we have two different groups. We have one for the profile picture and one for the actions inside of the navigation section. So we are going to create a new div right here around our icons and we're going to call it action section or well let's just call it actions like so then we give this a little bit more indent and let's save it up so 
instead of saying that we want to target the SVGs in the navigation, we want to go into the actions and then we target the SVGs. Let's save it up. And as you can see, now they get on a new line because we have a div and an image and the image is displayed as an inline block and a div is displayed as a block. So we have two blocks and they won't display in the same line. So to fix that, we actually want to alter the CSS, the parent class. The parent class is the navigation right here. So we go into the navigation and we actually want to, say that we want to display it as a flex element like so. And then we want to say that we want to align the items in the center of the navigation section. So we say align items, center. So, and next up, we actually want the profile picture on the left and the action buttons on the right. So we say justify content, space between, like so. And as you can see, now we have the layout that we want. We could also say space around. And it would give them a little bit space from the side as well. But instead of doing it with space around, we actually want to control the space by adding margins ourselves. So for the profile picture, we actually want to give it a little bit margin from the left side. So right here, we have the profile picture. Let's give it a margin left, 25 pixels, something like that. And then for the icons, we want to give it margin as well. So here we target the SVGs. And here we also want to say margin. 0 pixels vertically, let's go with 25 pixels horizontally and as you can see the message icon is now spaced a lot farther from the triple dot vertically icon but to fix this we actually only want to give them a margin right so what happens right now is we we'll give them a margin right and a margin left so the message icon has a margin right and the triple dot vertical has a margin left and that is why they get so far spaced out from each other if we only give them a margin right, this one will have a margin from the side, and this one will have a margin from the triple dot icon. So, right here, we want to say margin right, 25 pixels. And as you can see, now the message icon is closer to the triple dot icon. So, with this done, we actually have the navigation section from the chat box. In the next part, we are going to work on the search section, which will come right here. So, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you could follow along. Leave a like down below, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!